Greetings all and welcome to another session of Speaking Through My World. I'm aware that uh, 16 days of activism against violence against women and children um, is upon us once again. And this session is not about addressing that because you can read up on it, Google it. Uh, I've written about it in my previous blogs. I've recorded previous blogs on that. But today I really want to focus on two very, very important but very worrying trends that have happened within our space and, of course, um, in other sectors. And the first being the fact that when somebody is violated and the victim or survivor speaks out and the person who hears this pain and this cry doesn't do anything to protect or hear what that person is saying, that is a problem. And we need to understand that working in this space, uh, there have been many, many researchers, counselors, activists who have been in the space for many, many years and know and understand the, the realities of where abuse can take place. It can take place anywhere but also understand the realities of what certain actions could do to harm the person who's spoken up. Remember, we're in this crisis, and, I, and, I, and gender-based violence, we're in a crisis. It's not just a theme or a campaign or a, a hashtag which is going to end next year. We're in a major crisis, and we have been for a long time. And part of that is that why so many victims and, and survivors haven't been heard over the years and, and cases don't, people don't get justice at the court, is that everything has been pushed through a patriarchal narrative. Everything has been pushed through a misogynistic narrative. So what they call slut-shaming or gaslighting or blaming, victim-blaming somebody uh, example, if somebody was wearing a short dress and was dancing in a so-called provocative type of way, they did not invite the abuse to them. Yet for many, many years, people have been pushing that narrative. So going back to my fact of if somebody says to you that I have been violated in this specific space, it is your duty to do something about that, irrespective of who the perpetrator is. And you need to listen to the concerns and the words and the pain and the feeling that is coming from the victim or the survivor. And then take action on that. And moving to my second important point is that there's a strong trend of putting ex-perpetrators on the front line to drive the narrative to end gender-based violence, which is a problem. As much as we need a collective force, and it's not just about women or gender non-conforming people uh, pushing this. Yes, we do need the, 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 the unity and the solidarity from everybody. But it is not up to the perpetrator to drive that, especially if the person has shown no remorse and is using those platforms to promote their work or promote themselves or to gain sympathy. And I, and I say this because as, as crazy as it sounds, there are some people that believe that perpetrators should be seen as victims. And yes, you can go through a rehabilitation, you can go through your counseling, you need to show your remorse, you need to go through those different stages. And some people might realize their wrongs, but some people will never. But it is incredibly insulting and dangerous to put somebody of that nature to drive a campaign that's supposed to end gender-based violence. It's insulting, especially to the people that he has hurt in, in his past. It's insulting to other victims and other survivors. And that is why it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning, is that there have been many activists and organizations that have been in this space for a long time who have written the narrative of what abuse is. 
And protecting a perpetrator is one of those things that we need to stop doing. We need to move away from that. Because by doing that, you're also pushing the, the patriarchal ideologies and, and, and learnings and understandings. And, and then what's the point? And then just an add-on fact is that when abuse does happen, whether it's in your own camp, in your own company, or even out there, and you're trying to protect yourself or your brand or your space, the worst thing you can do as an activist is promote another level of emotional abuse on another victim. And what I mean by that is that putting their name out without their consent. It's just as violent as outing a gay or a gay or trans person before they have outed themselves. There's violence in that as well. Questioning the victim and the survivor as to what they were doing when the abuse happened. Are you sure it really did happen? Were you not dancing a little bit too sexy or provocative? No, this is not the type of narrative that you should be using. Gaslighting them in a public space is unacceptable. And so as we move collectively, because we need to move collectively and we need to honor our mistakes, you know, as, as difficult as it is, and you know, I always, always speak from a place of experience. And a couple of years ago, uh, when I was working for another NGO, volunteering for an NGO, um, somebody came into my personal space and said to me, you know, that they reached out to this NGO and didn't receive the necessary help that they, that they should have gotten. And as difficult as it was, I automatically had to then go back to the NGO as it was not only unfair, but also incredibly embarrassing that we were supposed to be providing the service and the service wasn't provided and then try and figure out what had happened and why this person wasn't, 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 wasn't attended to in the correct manner. Unfortunately, we, we, we didn't resolve the manner, and, and, and if this person is watching, you know who you are. I've, I've, I've sent out my apologies once again, and I did try to get to the bottom of it, and I'm, we are still here, and I am still here to talk about it and see if we can get additional help for you. But the reason why I'm saying this is that anything can happen in any space and we're human. And apologizing is not going to make us weak. It's not going to damage our brand. It's not going to do anything to us except correct the wrong so we can move on. So with that, go out. We need to learn more about the different levels of abuse that happens in our communities. If you see it, if you know it, what are you doing about it? Don't turn a blind eye. We've spoken about this. Understand the ramifications of certain actions. And of course, understand the power and the destructive nature of what the patriarchy and misogynistic ideologies and policies and, and, and judicial systems do, what they've done in the past. Because once we break that, we can break so many other shackles that have created boundaries around our empowerment, around our uh, success, our bodies, our voices being heard. Thanks for listening.